Uh, okay, uh, different presentation, a little bit different topic, but still similar and a little bit related. So this talk is about accelerating packet processing with uh, FPGA, with NICs that have an FPGA. So it's not an FPGA with a NIC, it's a NIC with an FPGA. Uh, and about the work we've done uh, relating to this in Melnox. So, slight introduction. NIC packet processing offloads have been proven to significantly improve performance. We are talking about this all the time and how to integrate support for such uh, offloads. Uh, some offloads have been with us for quite a while and some others are new. Uh, some basic examples are checksum offload, uh, segmentation offload, RSS, but there are many others new offloads such as IPsec inline, which we've presented in the, in the previous presentation. Uh, IPsec inline and RT security are uh, recent APIs that, that were introduced in uh, 1711 and allowed for uh, inline operations. Receive packets were decrypted by, by the NIC as they were scattered to memory, uh, and the same way packets that are being sent were encrypted by the NIC while being sent to the wire. So we are seeing here a new uh, model for offloads, a uh, generic inline acceleration. Uh, so we started with something very specific, which is crypto offload. Uh, but we believe that this inline approach for acceleration uh, can do way, way more. Uh, and in general, we believe that any application-specific action could be offloaded by a generic accelerator, for instance, an FPGA-capable NIC. Uh, moreover, a single NIC may support many acceleration units, uh, what we call uh, inline AFUs, that could be provided by multiple parties. So the IFU may be programmed to do any processing tasks, and those programs could be provided by multiple vendors. Uh, and any packet flow could be redirected to one of those AFU or even to multiple AFUs, providing multiple offloads. So today we have a good toolbox for handling flows, uh, and this toolbox is constantly evolving. We have uh, count, uh, those all are generally provided with RT flow. You can count packets with specific headers, or you can mark specific packets according to some pattern. Uh, you can steer them to various queues, provide RSS. In the future, you could modify them, like some packet header modification, do maybe some hairpinning, or any generic acceleration. Steer a flow to any AFU. We've seen some talks today that are talking about providing steering for generic protocols, such as Quick and uh, some crazy uh, telecommunications protocol. Um, so all of that could be provided by some programmable hardware. And w what's more programmable than smart NIC? An FPGA on the NIC or some ARM cores on the NIC or what have you. So for, for some specific examples, uh, as we did in IPsec, we encrypted the payload. So what that is essentially is a byte intensive packet transformation. Encryption is only one example. You can think about many more, such as compression or maybe some uh, uh, identification of patterns or many other things which, is byte inten which are byte intensive. Uh, as we see in the diagram uh, on the right side, we can provide a packet processing pipeline uh, and describe it to hardware. So uh, say you have some uh, application that does some packet processing, it parses some headers, does some additional processing on some proprietary protocol maybe, and then uh, processes some inline headers. So all of that could be described in a packet processing pip pipeline with some application uh, processing being offloaded to the FPGA uh, and providing further acceleration and better performance to your specific application. Uh, some other examples are uh, flow steering, uh, like steering quick or steering GTP or any other new protocol or proprietary protocol that's not generally supported by hardware. 
So about the requirements of generic inline offload. First of all, we need to discover what is supported on our generic accelerator. So uh, eventually someone programs the accelerator and it provides some feature. What is this feature? It might be uh, vendor dependent. It might be a feature that is provided not by the vendor of the hardware itself, but by, by someone else who has programmed an FPGA image or written some program for the CPU that's running beside the NIC hardware. So we need to discover what, what is available. Uh, additionally, we need to control this functionality. Once we've discovered the capabilities that are available, we need to configure them and provide some additional information like in IPsec, the security association, or anything else that's required for the specific offload. Um, we need to provide the flows to the accelerator, which flows should be processed by accelerator and which shouldn't. Uh, so we need the language to describe the packet flows which are matched and provided to the accelerator for further offloads and the interaction between the accelerator and the packet processing. Uh, finally, we need some data path to report or deliver a few specific information uh, together with MBUFs. Uh, you can think about the metadata that we needed with, uh, with IPsec and the Intel XGB device as one specific example of metadata that's going to be needed by such inline accelerators to provide their offload. So about AFU discovery, um, that's just an example of how this might look like. It's not a concrete suggestion, but in general, what we think every accelerator should provide is a vendor ID, which might be different from the NIC vendor ID that's providing this acceleration or the device vendor ID. Uh, a product ID, th there might be many different products for each vendor. And finally, a version of this product. Given this information, the application could uniquely identify the accelerator. However, the semantics are known to the application a priori. So we are not assuming any specific predefined semantics for acceleration, uh, mainly because there could be many such possibilities and many of them would eventually be defined by specific APIs, but initially we need to start going from something that's generic and provides the needs of the customer that's using this accelerator. Uh, so an example of a control path configuring this, uh, we have an APAC command that defines a session. It's really similar to the security API. So uh, in the session configuration, we provide the vendor ID, the product ID, and the command ID. So when there are multiple commands and some buffer carrying additional metadata. You can think about it as a configuration of a security association where the vendor ID, product ID, and command ID could be uh, like, uh, I don't know, NXP, Melnox, or Intel, and product uh, Niantic or Innova, and uh, command ID, EdSA, and delete SA. And the length would contain the security association parameters similar to IPsec. Um, once we've configured the session, we could provide uh, an uh, RT flow that uses this session to steer packets to the accelerator. So uh, what we see in this example, for instance, uh, is a call accelerator command that's uh, using the session configured for this vendor 1234 and this product ID. Uh, and the command means uh, for this application that uh, it's going to look for some payload uh, in, the, in the packet, and it's going to change the payload from full to bar. So this is the configuration for this specific AFU. And then uh, it takes some pattern. In this instance, some IPv4 with UDP. Uh, I've omitted the headers themselves uh, for brevity, but the, the idea, I think, is clear. And for all IPv4 and UDP packets with this specific pattern, it's going to apply this action to all incoming packets transforming the payload seamlessly for applications. So th this is just an example, but uh, the possibilities are endless, and I believe we should provide some way to, to support this in the PDK. There is some related work done previously to support uh, generic accelerators, but 
they haven't addressed uh, the inline model. And what we try to suggest is to extend the discussion to inline offloads as well. So in addition to what was discussed previously about programming devices and managing firmware or downloading and burning FPGA images, uh, we need also to support inline and we need not only to obstruct the PMD model, we need also to obstruct the packet processing pipeline. That's it. Uh, any questions? Okay, Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Round of applause.